Hey, good. How are you guys? Good. So we're going to start with Jay Anderson from Cage Side Press. Jay, go ahead. Thanks very much. And Angela, I mean, you uh, you set a record with six fights in uh, 337 days, and here you are back again. I mean, I know it's been a little bit longer this time, but what is it about fighting at this pace that works for you? Um, I love it. I love getting in there as often as possible. It just, uh, I always felt at the beginning of my career that I, I maybe did a little too much too soon. So this is my way of bridging that gap and being able to, I guess, just feel as comfortable as the girls who had like a long amateur MMA career, had like a long career before they got into the UFC. This is my way of uh, just kind of equaling that playing field and, and just being more comfortable in there. Is there no worry about burning yourself out fighting at that pace? Not right now. Uh, I think my body will tell me when I need to slow down and so far, I've been fresh. I felt fresh uh, every fight camp. Even when I jump in with only like a couple weeks notice, I still feel pretty fresh just because I, I train a lot, I train hard, uh, and I stay active in the gym. So right now, I, I haven't, <laughs> my body hasn't told me to slow down, but I'll definitely listen to it, especially as I start to get a little older and, uh, and the injuries can start accumulating. But I've been lucky enough that I haven't gotten too hurt in the cage. Uh, if anything, I, I get more hurt when I don't have a fight coming up just because I do dumb stuff in the gym or uh, or I'm not like eating as healthy or I'm coming in like maybe a little hungover. So it's a little easier for me to get injured in training when I'm outside of fight camp. And inside of fight camp, I'm a lot more safe. So right now it's working for me. Well, definitely stay safe. And speaking of the fight camp, I mean, there's so much going on in the world right now. We've got a global pandemic. What has this camp looked like for you? Have you been able to get the partners in that you needed, the time in that you needed? Uh, yeah, I was pretty lucky. Uh, we have a, a bunch of girl, uh, good girls at, uh, at Alliance and also uh, we're friendly with, uh, with 10th Planet. So we were able to get Alima Lay and, um, and Juliana, who's, uh, who's going to have her pro debut in Bellator, I think, soon, and, as well as uh, my teammates Paulina Granados and Lauren Mueller. So, uh, so I had a good group of girls pushing me through this. Also, uh, I train with the guys as well. So, um, so during uh, Jeremy and, and Dominic's camp, uh, there were a few people I could still train with who weren't going to be too big. Uh, so, so yeah, I was able to hit the ground running when it came to fight camp. We didn't have to do too much planning just because those guys were already in the gym working hard for, uh, for UFC 249. Now, Claudia is uh, a pretty big name in the division. She's fought for the title. If you get the win, this will be four straight for you. Where do you think this would leave you in, in the strawweight division? Uh, I think, I think um, right now the strawweight division has been turning over a lot. Like, uh, I think, I don't remember how many fights Whaley won before she got a title shot, but it, it wasn't that many, at least not that many ranked opponents that she beat. So I feel like a win over Claudia is going to sh just shoot me up to the top. So uh, yeah, I definitely feel a little lucky with the fact that I was able to get this matchup right now. I feel like in normal circ circumstances, I would have had to fight maybe a top like 15 to 10 fighter and then uh, Claudia if I did well. But uh, I feel like it's a good matchup for me, especially how I'm feeling in the cage and in the gym right now and uh and yeah one over her uh would be a great way to argue that i deserve a title shot and last one for me i mean we've had a couple events now with the empty arena uh, what's been your take on it so far does it look interesting and have you done anything in the gym to replicate it you know train without music or whatnot uh, i had a few training sessions without music just because we were uh you know trying not to cause attention or <laughs> bring attention to the gym um but uh yeah i started my first big deal fight was in on top and there's no audience you train without music at the gym because they have to film everything and when you fight all you can hear are your teammates so it's gonna be a lot like that and in that fight i remember it just felt like a normal fight like my fight on tough compared to my uh, my fight like in the arena felt exactly the same, you know? So if anything, it's just easier to hear your corners and easier to hear what's going on in the cage, hear the other people's corners. I think it's just gonna be a normal night.
All right. Well, thanks very much. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Nolan King with MMA Junkie. Nolan, go ahead. Hey, Angela. Uh, my first question, kind of going off of what Jay was saying, but you know, staying so active, when you think about the pandemic and all the adjustments that we talked to fighters about what they've had to do during these training camps, I feel like if there's anybody that could handle this, it would be you. Do you feel like that this is maybe an advantage that you have coming into this one, that you're used to having to plan on the fly like this? Yeah, I, I do feel like I've been very, I guess, uh, flexible. <laughs> it's, 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 it's something that I'm used to doing. Um, and with this fight camp, it actually went really smoothly. At first, I thought maybe I wouldn't have enough time to get ready. But I had about five weeks, which is a little longer than I usually have. That's probably my longest fight camp since the Mexico City one. So I feel in shape. Uh, I feel ready to go. And uh, I know Gadelia was training. I think she had two fights canceled before this. So I, I feel like my cardio is definitely going to be on display just because I had so much time to prepare for this one on top of the fact that I've been more active than her. Uh, so yeah, I feel like that's going to work to my advantage for sure. When you were talking about the potential of, of trying to prevent overtraining, uh, you, you kind of didn't want to commit, but is there any type of, is there any type of number you're trying to set for yourself this year? You know, Hey, by the time 2020 ends, I want to fight X amount of times. Hey man, the, the, I think the record was six and I just tied it. <laughs> I think I just tied it with, uh, with Cerrone. So let's go for seven. <laughs> uh yeah yeah we'll see what happens with the next fight cards i don't even know who's fighting next when it comes to my weight class um but the reason i was able to get this next fight was just because the borders are closed and uh claudia's opponent couldn't get to the u.s so i feel like it, i have a better chance right now just because we can't travel too much or the fighters can't travel too much to locations to to get their fights going so so yeah, I mean, <laughs> if that works for my favor, great. Make the best out of a bad situation. Um, but yeah, I would I would love to fight. Uh, I would love to break that record, fight seven times. Uh, if not, uh, I'll just keep doing my normal six. <laughs> well, you're well on your way. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Ezekiel with Super Lucha. So Ezekiel, go ahead. Hey, hello, Angela. How are you? Hey, good. Um, how was this training camp? Uh, you've been training with Wilson Reyes, right? He will be your corner man. Yeah. How it was you know, uh, training in this uh, special context and given the fact that this is maybe your, your fight with more time to prepare because you fight in January, then one month later and now we are in May. So how it was uh, this preparation? Um, it's great preparation. Wilson's a really great training partner and, uh, and like, he's kind of become like a coach to me. Um, he, he's, he's very detail oriented. If I'm doing something that might get me in trouble, he'll, he'll correct it right away. He doesn't let me, uh, doesn't let me slide really. So he's been a great look. Uh, he's really helped tighten up my jujitsu, uh, tighten up my wrestling. He's an amazing wrestler and grappler. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's been really dope having him. He was with me in Mexico when I was training in Zacatecas uh, for that fight camp. And uh, he's just been cornering me ever since just because he's a good size for me. Uh, even though he's a little, a little heavier, he's a good size for me. And he, and he just is an encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to grappling. So, uh, so, yeah, he's been a really nice addition to fight week. Do you think that the grappling will be a key factor to defeat uh, Claudia Gadela. Do you think that the grappling will make the, a difference in your fight? Um, I definitely think there's going to be some filling out and uh, I, I'm going to have to be careful in figuring out her timing, making sure I'm not standing tall, making sure I'm not too predictable with my movements because that's when you get the takedown is when someone's coming forward and you know they're about to come forward. So whoop go right under him. So I'm definitely going to try to be uh, elusive. I'm going to try to hurt her when she does come in and go for the takedowns. And uh, and I think if she if she links up with me, I can tire her out. So yeah, I, I definitely feel like I have the cardio advantage and I'm pretty good in the clinch. So I feel like I can tire her out there and get her to a point where I can hit her without her being able to defend herself. So uh, if you beat uh, Claudia, 
Do you think the next for you is a title shot against Wei Li Shang, or do you think you have to fight first uh, Shoana? Uh, what do you think? Um, I think something like that. It all depends on what happens in the fight. Like even if I win a fight and it's a close decision, I I think I might want to just have another fight just to make sure I'm totally ready to defend that title no ma no matter what. And I've said this before, but I I feel like the reason or not the reason, but the fact that I've had so many ups and downs in my career, I've been able to really uh, address a lot of holes in my game and just fix it and and uh, become a better fighter from it. So when I do get the title, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to be a dominant champion. You know, I want to be like Joanna, just uh, just winning every fight. Every every time I get a fight, everyone's like. When are they gonna get knocked out? Just because they know that I have this reputation of being a finisher. So, uh, so that's my ultimate goal. And uh, and you know, I'm hoping that I have a really impressive win over Gadelia. And uh, and if I do, I'm gonna be ready for that title shot for sure. And uh, how, uh, the last question for me: And uh, if you finish and you get the title shot, how do you see yourself against Wei Li Shang, who just came up? having one of the best fights in the sports history how how do you see uh, against her um i think whaley is a really really strong striker i think she has a great takedown defense she's a good scrambler i think i think if we fought it would be a muay thai match it would be a kickboxing match and um i've, I've had a few close to close decision wins or in close decision losses when it comes to that so i've definitely been trying to amp up my volume amp up uh Uh, my power strikes and get myself ready for for a tough fight like that. But yeah, if if I win this fight with Gadelia, I, I feel like I'm going to be more than ready for a fight with Whaley. Well, thank you very much and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, Angela, that's all we have for you. Thank you so much. Thanks.